This evening we're coming to you from the very beautiful County Wexford coastline, which of course attracts thousands of holidaymakers every year. But it's a coastline with its darker side too, one which has seen tragedy and drama down through the years. Now we've been sifting through the RTE archive, finding stories which have changed and developed uh, in subsequent years. And we start back in 1968 with the story of a tragedy which happened out there at the Tusker Rock Lighthouse. The search for victims resumed this morning after eight hours yesterday failed to locate wreckage. British Air Force Gannets and Shackletons took off from Broadley Naval Air Force Base before dawn to join the naval ships and lifeboats that had searched through the night. A Shackleton pilot spotted the first body about midday just off the Tusker Rock and about 20 miles north of where it had been thought the plane crashed. Our reporter Michal O'Brien was in a civilian plane near the area when the report came through. We were flying at 100 feet over the Tusker Rock when the first body was picked up at 1.26 this afternoon. Immediately afterwards, a number of other bodies were reported floating in the sea by a pilot from McGannett close by. In the general wreckage, there were papers, parts of the interior of the aircraft, cardboard, and a brown handbag. Aviation experts are tonight playing with two possibilities. One, that the St. Phelan ran into a very severe turbulence to send her spinning downwards. And second, and more likely, that she lost a wing, a tail, or some other vital direction gear, sending her uncontrollably into the sea. It was, of course, an appalling loss for those unfortunate families. And these 43 years later, people are still asking questions. How and why did that uh, tragedy happen? Well, it was in 1974 that I came here to talk to some local people about what they had seen on that fateful day. Viscount St. Phelan had plunged into the sea, killing all 61 people on board. It was later found to have hit the sea one and a half miles off Tusker. But even the location of the crash was not known for some days. Expert opinion was that the plane had crashed off Strumble Head on the Welsh coast. Only 14 bodies were recovered. The rain wreckage itself was not found for two and a half months. Around noon it happened, I heard it. A large bang around the afternoon, around quarter past twelve. I was out washing the car at the time and I heard the bang. I looked up and out towards the Tusker I seen a large column of water about six miles off the point and about a mile east of the Tusker. Had you seen anything actually enter the water or had you just seen the splash? No, I only seen the splash because at the time I was washing the wheel of the, yeah, washing the, wheel of the car at the time and I heard the bang. Now, how long before the splash did the bang happen? Just a few minutes, just heard the bang and looked up straight away. I thought it was thunder first when I seen, I seen a large cloud south of the Tusker at the time. So what you would have heard was, was the impact of it probably the... was the impact. She hit the water at the time. Well, it was um, a triangular-shaped um, wing um, sticking up out of the water. And Kevin, had you seen or heard anything uh, before noticing that silvery object in the sea? No, I hadn't, no. Not a thing? Not a thing. Uh, is it at all possible, in fact, that what you were seeing was what other people saw off the Tusker Rock, that you're confusing the two things? No, I don't think so, because the Salties are out this direction here, and the Tusker is blocked out by that land over here. And it was at the Salties that you... It was at the Salties that I sighted. I see this plane coming at 10 minutes to uh, roughly over anything from 9 minutes to 10 minutes to 12. And I thought she was a curious affair, and she turned off to the south here, and she was dropping to the left. Now, why did you think she was a curious? What, what was different well, about Well, I her? thought she was a big uh, plane to be down so low for me to see. And, I mean, did, did she sound normal, or...? Well, uh, she sounded peculiar, all right. She was going, like, in partly in jumps and falling to the left. That was in 1974, and the most popular conspiracy theory at the time was that the Aer Lingus plane had been blown out of the sky by a British military missile or a drone, and that the whole thing had then been hushed up. 
Testing missiles is a dangerous business, and Aberport's exclusion zone, shown in red, stretches to within a few minutes' flying time of the Irish coast. Well, the story of the Tusco Rock uh, air crash, and indeed the conspiracy theory associated with it, still activates the minds of uh, many people uh, even today. And one man who's made a study of that and has been fascinated by that story down through the years is former Waterford uh, member of the Dáil, Brian O'Shea. Brian, what was it that drew you into this whole conspiracy theory? Well, essentially, uh, the mystery uh, surrounding the air accident in the beginning the fact that it was such a horrific event, you know, 61 people uh, lost their lives. And I heard bits and pieces uh, that uh, set my mind working. Uh, I don't like mysteries. And then laterally, when I became a TD and got some more uh, information, I decided that I'd go strongly into the issue to see uh, if it was possible to establish what exactly happened. because. One of the things that has come across very strongly to me is that the, the fact that there wasn't closure uh, for the relatives is a huge uh, issue. And also, when air accidents happen and they're explained, uh, new practices are introduced that makes flying safer. And what was it at the early stage that led you to believe there might be something uh, to the conspiracy theory? What, what was that thing? Well, basically, there was a relative of mine uh, who uh, was a fisherman and he told me of a trawler uh, taking up part of a missile in its nets uh, and I always felt that, that this should be explained properly. So the, the missile theory uh, had developed from the examiner's report back uh, in 1970 and you know bits and pieces of information that I started picking up uh, want, led me to want to explore it a lot more and I did that for a long period. And did you become convinced that the, the conspiracy theory, the theory that this plane had been shot out of the sky by a British missile, did you, did you become convinced that it was actually true? I was pretty well sure of it for a long, long time and um, whereas it can't be absolutely totally discounted, uh, at this stage it is my considered view uh, that the cause of the accident uh, was uh, airframe uh, failure. Certainly you did have drones uh, being launched from Wales, uh, missiles being launched you know to take them down and so on. Another contact that I met who had worked in Aberport and who had no axe to grind told me that 200 people would be involved in the firing. Now in my view if 200 people were involved in an accident at this remove certainly somebody would have come forward uh, with evidence if that were the case. I believe it was structural failure and I hope uh, that in the light of what has happened now by way of the more recent investigations that uh, relatives will find some comfort and uh, can move down the road of closure uh, to leave it behind them and get on with their lives.